Hello everybody, my name is Catherine Wilson and I work as the Primary Improvement Lead for Maths for Corvus Learning Trust. I also work at Danesfield School and teach reception class four days a week. I have enjoyed lots and lots of the BBO Maths work groups focusing on embedding mastery and today I'm going to share with you lots of different ideas about how you can use resources at home to support your child's learning. So we are going to start by looking at our number bonds to 10. So one thing we're going to do to begin with is we are going to draw ourselves a 10 frame. So a 10 frame is used from reception all the way up to year six. And whilst we use it at the moment for numbers from one to 10, children will later adapt this to hundreds or thousands or even decimal numbers, percentages and fractions. So in this game of number ones to 10, I'm going to have my 10 frame, as you can see here, a space for each counter and you can use whatever kind of counting resource you have at home, whether that be pasta, I've got some army men that I'm going to use here, I've got some emoji stickers. The idea that we try to stick with is whatever we use, we really want to make sure that it's the same colour and it's the same size. So I might say, can you build me the number four? And then the children might build the number four. Can you build me the number four in a different way? They might make it into the dice form. They might understand that they don't need to be together to represent a number. So we still have four here because we have three and one more. We still have four here because we have two and another two and a double. So build in different amounts. Further up the school, it might be in year one or in year two, the children can say, this is not going to be worth one. This time each counter is worth 10. So this is no longer representing four, it's representing 40. One of the games the children really like is a quick reveal game. So we would say to children, no peeking, no peeking, maybe put a blindfold on or they can cover their eyes. And then we would do a quick reveal of an amount on a 10 frame using some kind of cover. So we would say, ready, have a look. How many have you got? And the idea is that children begin to group numbers very quickly to help them with their counting skills. So they might recognise there's five because there's two and three more. Or they might see it as three in a triangle and another two. And we would do that all the way up to number 10. You could also ask children for addition skills. What number sentence could you make using this picture? It might be two add four. It might be 20 add 40. It might be 200 add 400, depending on the value of the counter. So lots and lots of games you can use using a 10 frame, different types of counters and a quick reveal is always great fun. Another activity that we do use a lot at school is the shuffle box game. Now this shuffle box I've made using just a cereal box. I've taped the end. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw a line down the middle. And for this activity, I'm going to look at number bonds for number six. So whilst it's important that children know their number bonds to 10, it's really important that they also know the number bonds within every number to 10. It just helps them with much faster addition and subtraction later on. So I have got my shuffle box here. I have split it into two parts. You might decide later to split it into three parts for a challenge. And because I'm focusing on the number six, I'm only going to be using six counters, again, using the same color. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to shuffle my box. And then when I would reveal the way the counters have moved, I would ask children to tell me a number sentence. So this time in this shuffle box, I have four on one side and two on the other. So I would say four and two make six. Later on, it could be that this is 40 and 20 make 60 and you can adjust it. And children can write their own number sentences or represent them in a part whole model. And I will come on to that later. You can change the amount that you have in there to numbers to 10 or even further. You can also use this further down the school and reception to talk about more and fewer. And most of all, they just really love shuffling it around. It's great fun for them. 
And lastly, when children have their numbers within 10, the numbers within 20, we talk about comparing the amounts and we start to use the inequality signs. So the inequality signs are the more than and less than signs. And they, the children are introduced to these very early on as well as the equal sign. They actually meet these signs in reception when they are four or five years old. So one activity that really helps them to understand the signs is by using some pasta. So I have some pasta here. I'm going to sit with the penne pasta and I also have some glow sticks. You could use some straws or you could use some kind of like diffuser stick or anything you have or sticks in the garden work just as well. Now I have got here my two glow sticks and I'm going to show why we have the equal sign and why it's called the equal sign. So you can talk to the children about how equal means the same as so I can see here, two pieces of pasta is the same as two pieces of pasta. That is why this is the equal sign, because they are the same amount. What happens if I move one amount, and I can see that one is less than another, is we start to create the inequality sign. So we can see here that this is less and this is more. This works really well because it really helps children understand that the inequality sign means that the gap is largest here and that's because the number's bigger. The gap is smallest here and that's because the number's smaller. Children are often introduced to crocodiles and that can sometimes work but it can often confuse them. So we encourage children to look at the shape of the sign and see what they can understand from the shape of it. So this is a great activity for that. Now we are going to talk about the place value of digits within numbers and how this is so important and different activities you can do at home. So when we talk about the place value of a digit, that means it's the value of that digit within the number. So for example, in 324, the three would represent 300, whereas in 36, the three represents three tens. So to begin with, in reception, children look at one digit numbers and they start to look at two digit numbers. And in year two, they look at two digit numbers and they start to look at three digit numbers. So here, I am going to represent the part whole model. Usually it's in circles, so you might use plates. I'm using kitchen roll here. So I'm going to have my whole amount and I'm going to be splitting it to begin with into its tens and ones. And we use the language of tens and ones rather than the language of tens and units. So I'm going to use my playing cards here to build an amount. And my number this time is 37. So I have the number 37. And I'm thinking about how I can build 30 and seven. So for my place value, part whole model, I'm going to have the parts, the whole amount and splitting it into the tens and the ones. So it has three tens. So I'm going to be using my blue counters to represent the tens. And I'm going to be using my green counters to represent the seven for the ones. It's really important to try to use different representations of each place value digit. So the children know when they're counting that they need to change from counting in tens to counting in ones. So I have my 37 and I can check that by going 10, 20, 30. I'm changing counter 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. And you can do that with numbers up to 100. For a challenge, you can ask the children to change the way they are partitioning their number. So you might decide that instead of partitioning 37 into just tens and ones, there are other ways that you can partition. You might decide that you're going to do it as 20, 10 and seven. Or you might decide that you're going to do it as 10, 25 and two. So it's really good for children to start to understand that numbers can be broken up in lots and lots of different ways. And lastly, 
Children really love making their own resources. This is something they do throughout the school. And one I have here is some DIY dominoes. So I just have some post-it notes and I would ask children to roll the dice to build their own dominoes. So to start with, I know my domino is going to have two parts like a traditional domino. You might decide to make it trickier by having three parts to make the whole amount rather than two parts. I've got the dice here and I have a two. So you could ask children either to write the digit two or they can draw the dots. It's up to you. If you know your child needs some number formation practice, they can do this. And the other digit is five. So my first domino is 25. So the children can then use their counters. They can use a place value whole part model to build that number in different ways. Okay, we're now going to focus on early multiplication. So from reception all the way through to year two, the children focus on their two times tables, their five times tables and their 10 times tables and they begin the basis of the later tables too. So in our two times tables, it would be really important for children to understand this practically rather than just reciting their tables. Two times tables are particularly important because it really does underpin the doubling and halving that comes later on. So for two times tables, one activity could be for them to practice their times tables by counting their socks as two, four, six, this it works really great and later on what you can do is talk about odd numbers and odd socks and the language of odd. Another activity that you can do for two times tables is looking at their teddy bears and thinking just by looking at this teddy bear how many sets of twos can you see? Two ears, two eyes, two arms, two legs and they can start by counting two, four, six and eight or they could just group their teddy bears together and start counting just their paws or their feet and working out how many sets of two there are. For the five times tables, one really good activity that works is counting using gloves because that represents five. So children can have lots of sets of gloves and they're counting up in fives or down in fives or you're removing one, which one is missing. And then for counting in tens as well as fives using coins as well that really helps to make the link between our timetables and a real context of money. The other children as they move from reception they talk about groups when it comes to multiplication. So for example if I have five times four we would represent that as five groups of four. So that means if I was trying to build that I would have five groups of Four. So that's one group of four, another group of four, and you can see I'm putting them in dice four to help the children count. Another group of four, one more group of four, and another group of four. So the children can see that this is five groups of four, or I could say let's build four groups of five, as the children are more familiar with this times table than the four times table. So I could have four groups of five to help them count. Ideally use the counters that are the same color because it makes it easier for them, but it just depends what you have around the house. Later on, this grouping turns into arrays where children are looking at multiplication in a different way. Another option would be for children to use their Lego for this activity or to use a cotton bud and some paint and they can group and dot the amounts to help them build it. But at the moment, multiplication is understanding as groups of and then that later links to their division as well. When we talk about arrays, we're looking at how much children understand what multiplication looks like. It's not just about them reciting their times tables. It's really important they can understand what it looks like. So when they come across word problems later on, they can use their times tables. So for example, if they have the times table three times five, 
and they're building an array, they would have it as three, three lots of five as an array. Lots of children love using Minecraft, especially the old children. And that's a great platform to practice this skill too. So here you can see it's three groups of five, or they can rotate it to have five groups of three. And linked with our early times tables and multiplication skills is our early understanding of division. And the language that we use around division at this age is sharing. So we begin by looking at the odd and even numbers because that links to sharing and it links to our two times tables. So if, for example, I turned a, um, a playing card over, you can use um, automatic number generators online and I've got the number nine and I'm thinking, is number nine an odd number or an even number? And most children would know maybe that it's an odd number, but we would ask them, how do you know? Show me that it's an odd number. So for example, children could collect nine counters, they could collect nine teddy bears, they could collect nine stones, nine pieces of pasta, nine of anything. And the idea is with an odd number, there's an odd one out. So we talk about them being in pairs, and there's an odd number. So you can see there's one without a partner, and that is how you know it's an odd number. When we talk later on, when children meet bigger numbers like 45, and they'll say it's an odd number because it ends in five, that doesn't tell us how much they understand. It's an odd number because if you were to divide it by two or pair everybody up within 45, there would be one left without a partner. So we're really looking at their understanding and their reasoning behind it rather than just rote learning. Another activity to do is looking at sharing using a teddy bear picnic scenario. So if we've got 15 or we've got 16 biscuits or 16 cakes or 16 pieces of fruit and you're dividing or sharing, giving the actual teddy bears and having a teddy bear picnic to show the process of sharing and to show the process of dividing. For children, it's really important within division to understand something's fair or not fair and the idea of sharing again that language. Another activity for them would be to work out breaking things in half or breaking things in quarters as they start to introduce um, quarters into year one and year two. Things like spaghetti that are really easy to break where children could try to break it in half. Is that a near half? How much closer is it? Could you break it in half again to build quarters? or looking at Lego and building different amounts with Lego. So a larger piece of Lego with four parts could be double the pieces of Lego with two parts. So building fractions into everyday play and everyday fun. And to finish with, I'm just gonna share some other ideas of games that you can use for any kind of maths facts, whether that be your number bonds to 10, addition and subtraction, multiplication, fractions and decimals later on, or with older children. So one activity you could have is bingo. So with bingo, you could have a selection of numbers. Here I've used numbers with uh, lower than 20. So I might ask children just for recognition if they're in reception, can you find the number that's 16? If it's for older children, I might be saying, can you find the number that's double eight? Or I might say it's the same as 10 and eight more, or 10 and six more, or 10 and one more. And you can adapt it and change it for whatever skill you are practicing. With older children, you might use decimal numbers or percentages or fractions in there instead. Another activity that children love is noughts and crosses. So here I would just fill my noughts and crosses grid with different calculations for them to practice. So they would have to try and solve the calculation before using the space. Building their own kind of abacus also is great fun. So here I've just put pegs on a hanger, looking at number bonds to 10, they can see it's five and five or it's six and four. And this really shows that we're not taking any away. We're not changing how many there are in total. We're just moving different amounts to find out the different number bonds within 10. You can do this within five or within 20 as well. The things outside, because at the moment we're trying to encourage children to be away from the screen when they can. Things like hopscotch outside work really well, or having flashcards or numbers up and children can use their nerf gun or water gun or throwing different things at questions that are up on the fence. 
that works really well. Or even having cushions around in your living room with different calculations on them and they can play like the floor is lava where they're jumping around, they're not allowed to touch the ground and every time they land on a cushion, there's a different question. Anyway, I really hope that gives you lots of different activities for you to try at home. And thank you for taking the time to listen to this video. Thank you.